An Australian university has created a device that could confine oil spills in water. The tractor beam sits on water and has the ability to manipulate floating objects and explain rips at the beach. We're joined now by AUT Applied Ecology Institute Director Professor Steve Pointer. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. So how does this tractor beam work? Well, it's fascinating. Um, it's essentially a mathematical um, resolution of something that's been observed for a long time. So this team at ANU, which is the Australian National University in Canberra, essentially modelled the three-dimensional structure of waves. And they found that if you manipulate that three-dimensional structure, that the actual surface of the water um, where those waves are can be manipulated such that objects on the surface, in the case of this study, a ping-pong ball, can actually be induced to flow towards the source of the wave, hence the, the, the term tractor beam, because it's essentially um, drawing an object towards the source of, of an opposing force. Um, they did this by using high-speed cameras and very small particles on the surface of water, and they were able to, to model the movement of those particles. And the applications of this? What, what are the well, potentially ways it could huge? Be used? Yeah, I, I think potentially huge. I mean, if you could scale this up, which is of course an if at the moment, but but assuming that's possible, um, one could influence the movement of ships, perhaps with with fine tuning for docking. But more importantly, perhaps with oil spills, there's the potential to contain oil spills, perhaps when they're heading towards sensitive coastal areas. So, I think potentially huge application. Mm. And it can detect things like rips and. Well, the, yeah, this is an, this is another potential. Um, particularly interesting for swimmers and surfers mm. here, um, by modelling the surface flow of water, potentially we could try to understand how rips um, uh, you know, m move and behave, because at the moment, you know, often they're a little bit of an unknown. Mm. Tsunami waves? I'm not so sure about that. I, I guess I, I guess you could scale it up to that to that that scale, but whether or not you could actually attract something on waves that big, I don't know. <laughs> right, cyborg technology can now tell us how the brain works, especially when it comes to health problems. Yeah, so um, this is really a nanotechnology story, and nanotechnology has really been revolutionising the way we, we understand the human body and medicine for, for several years now. Um, but a study just uh, released this week by the American Chemical Society. Um, in, in the States has shown that nanotechnology is making yet another leap and, and this is to do with miniaturization. So um, nano wires have been used for many years now to monitor the electrical signaling between neurons which are cells in the brain um, but now these these wires have got a lot smaller so uh, they're, they're billionths of, of a millimeter across and the idea now is that we can actually interface those wires inside living cells and even create 3D matrices where we can have living tissue and nanofibers entwined together in a cyborg-like relationship. So very exciting. Do you think it could be used to detect brain disorders and, uh, and disease? Ab absolutely. I mean, the idea is that um, um, many brain disorders are related to uh, a misfiring of signals between the neurons, the cells in the brain. And so that's one thing. But also, of course, there's huge potential for repair. And that is that if, if we can work out how a brain should function under normality, maybe by implanting a cyborg-like chip, if you like, um, there is a potential to actually um, remediate some of these, uh, mm. these conditions. Okay, microhabitats and oil, they're showing a potential for alien life. Oh yeah, this is a great story. Yeah, so this is a story not on an alien planet, but in Trinidad of all places. So Trinidad is a Caribbean island, um, has the largest asphalt lake in the world. Um, so asphalt, basically if you dug up the road outside the studio here and melted it, um, it will become asphalt, so the hot, tarry substance. Um, but what's been found by this study is that the asphalt in this lake has tiny water droplets in it which support microbial communities which are actually getting energy and food from the oil itself. And interestingly for astrobiologists, that is people who study the, the possibility of life on other planets, uh, there are massive asphalt lakes on one of Saturn's moons, Titan. And so of course they're, they're all a quiver at the moment at the prospect of this being a really good model for life on, on Titan. So in, in terms of uh, finding microbial life on, on that planet, that potentially is possible, isn't it? I think so. I mean, I th it's interesting that there are, there are several potential habitats for life in our solar system. Mars is the obvious candidate, but also one of Jupiter's moons, Europa, is being looked at. It's an icy planet. And now we've got a third model, and that is Titan, where we've got the, the possibility of life essentially in bubbling oil. Mm. Okay. Thanks very much there. Thanks, My pleasure. Steve.